Well, hi, everyone. I'm Anne Marie Green. And I'm Vladimir G. Thanks for joining us. We start this hour with a top story on CBSNews.com. Remnants of Florence continue to create dangerous conditions in the southern U.S. A tornado in Virginia tore roofs off buildings yesterday and caused a warehouse to collapse, killing at least one person. As the storm system begins soaking the northeast, several rivers in North Carolina are still rising, creating even more flooding. The Cape Fear River is bringing just that to the communities near it, fear. Some areas have not seen the worst flooding yet. Constant rain from Hurricane Florence caused rivers and creeks in the Carolinas to swell, flooding homes and businesses. As the rivers crest, flooding is only expected to get worse. I think people are getting complacent and that's dangerous. Um... Brendan Plodnik is worried about the Cape Fear River's crest. That's a lot of water, and that water's got to go somewhere. Rescues continued Monday through North Carolina. Crews used boats to help evacuate people in Lumberton trapped by floodwaters. I thought we were okay until this, uh, till last night when the water just kept coming up and up. The Lumber River in Lumberton is cresting and will not go below major flood stage until at least next week. Our biggest threat here in this area is the, the Lumber River rising. We rode along Monday with Pembroke Police Rescue Commander Matthew Locklear. It was the Lumber River that caused all of the massive flooding during Hurricane Matthew. So right. that's another reason for concern. Right, exactly. As the water rises, so does Florence's death toll. I was holding his hand, trying to hold him, trying to pull him up. And it got to a point I couldn't hold on anymore, and he let go. Daisy Lee's 14-month-old son, Caden Lee Welch, was killed after being swept away by rushing floodwaters in Union County Sunday night. Caden's body was recovered Monday. I did everything I could for the moment I was pregnant in the moment. To, to this moment, I lost him. I did everything I could as a parent to save him and protect him. DeMarco Morgan is with us now from Fayetteville, North Carolina. DeMarco, the damage looks extensive from all the reporting that we've seen from you over the last couple of days. What's it like where you are right now? Well, Vlad, I can tell you this. The big moment for us is, of course, the Cape Fear River right here behind me. It's expected to crest today, and that's what we've been watching for the past couple of days. Right now, it's at the very bottom of this bridge here, almost kissing the bridge here, but it's expected to crest right above it, which could be bad news for the people here in Fayetteville and those who have homes and businesses up and down the stream. But uh, when you talk about the damage in this community, Vlad and Anne Marie, uh, you're talking about flood damage, uh, not necessarily wind damage. We did see uh, where they had one of the roofs uh, above a gas station had been blown off, and of course that was attributed to uh, Florence. But this area has always been concerned about floods because of what happened during Hurricane Matthew. And actually, uh, the location of where uh, the water is right now, that's above 54 feet, that's right where it was when Hurricane Matthew actually struck. So when you talk about the damage again, you're uh, looking at flood damage and, and about 600 roads across the entire state are closed as a result of Florence. Many of those roads in this area, because you have downed trees, downed power lines, and some of the roads, because of the water and the, the saturated uh, earth beneath it, have caused uh, those roads to buckle. So you're talking about a lot of damage. They will need help both locally, state, and federally to get back, federally, I should say, to get back on track. And as I understand it, there's concern about a railroad trestle breaking off and floating away. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's right. We actually have uh, pictures of that. It's a, a railroad bridge that's actually crossing uh, the Cape Fear River, and now it's sort of suffering from a log uh, backup here, a log jam. And uh, many city officials are concerned, along with county officials, are concerned that that may break because of the pressure that's on it right now. During Hurricane Matthew, you, did, you didn't have a log uh, jam, and the current wasn't as strong as it is right now. But the danger today is that you have a lot of tourists who are coming out here, people who live in this area who are making their way to this bridge to actually pay attention to it, to look at this water. The unfortunate thing is they're still trying to walk and stand on that railroad bridge, which is not good news. We had some officers earlier who were screaming and shouting at the uh, tourists to get off. We've seen people still walking on that bridge. It is extremely dangerous, but uh, this bridge right over here over to my left, you can see a number of the people, again, uh, those who live here, 
who are just coming to take pictures because they're calling it historic, which it is indeed historic, but also those who lived during uh, Hurricane Matthew, who lived through it and lost some of their homes and just now getting back on their feet. And now they have a major concern, of course, and that is when this river will crest. And it was supposed to crest sometime this morning, but we're hearing now that it won't crest until 1 a.m. Wednesday morning. So, DeMarco, what's it going to take for the area to recover from all of this flooding? What are officials telling you that they need from the federal government? Well, one, they need people to pay attention to their warnings. They're telling people do not go back home right now. Uh, try to stay on higher ground because uh, those who chose to stick around, chose to stay, uh, it's sort of uh, causing a backup, a backlash, or a backlog, I should say, for first responders because they're spending their time uh, as opposed to trying to clear roads so people can have, you know, a way to travel back and forth. They're spending their time trying to rescue people who chose to stay home when they should have got out, uh, gotten out in the first place. So that's one of the major things right there but they're also talking about uh, when it comes to getting this area back together uh, utility companies being able to again once once again get down these roads here and get the power back on there are more than half a million people who are without power in both North and South Carolina so they got to get it together get this power back on and they say that could take uh, a couple of weeks so when you're trying to get back on your feet Vlad and you don't have any power that stuff this business that we're standing outside of it's a, a bait shop uh, they just pulled up with two generators so they're just trying to keep things going and so some of the food in here, it's also grill, uh, doesn't spoil. But many people are depending on uh, generators in this area, but it will take some time before they're back. Oh, yeah. The fallout of Florence will be months, yes. maybe even years. Yep. Uh, DeMarco Morgan, thank oh, you yeah. so much. And You're back, guys. Well,